Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at NXP with Cliff Lloyd, who's going to talk today about configurable logic. Cliff, what's the difference between a doing a uh, configurable solution in hardware versus software? What, are, what is the problem we're trying to solve here? So, the, Ed, the problem we're trying to solve here is to make it easy for the design engineer and purchasing to give them the flexibility to use one part in many different functions. And so what does that do in terms of, so you've got a, a configurable logic in hardware versus software versus firmware versus an FPGA, what, what, what do you benefit from that? Well, if you're using a, uh, a, a FPGA or a ROM code based product, you have to pre-program it ahead of time and then once you program those devices, they're dedicated to that particular function. With configurable logic, there's no programming at all involved. You lay out the PCB for the function you want the configurable logic device to perform. So you can take the one device and depending on where it's placed on the PCB will determine what function it's performing. So what have you drawn for us? What's going on there? So here I had the inner workings of a configurable logic device. And basically it has six gates inside the device. It's got three inverters, uh, AND gate, and then it has a NAND gate with two inputs inverted and an output OR gate. And from this configuration of logic, you can configure this device to perform many different functions, depending on how you connect the inputs on this device, whether you connect them to VCC or ground. And when you're doing that, what happens in terms of power when you're doing that versus software versus um, FPGA? So from a power perspective, we put two of these devices in the same package. And when I'm putting two devices in the same package, then the amount of power that this device consumes is less than the amount of power that two individual components consume. Less than the sum of the two individual components. And it also saves on area too, right? True, Ed, because uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in logic today, the silicon is only a, a minor portion of the overall package size. So we can grow the silicon a little bit more, add the extra circuitry, and still put it in the same size package. What do design engineers have to think about, or architects, when they're working with something like this versus, say, software? Do they, are there any special needs of this? Typically, logic is brought in late in the game. They don't initially start off with uh, logic. They, they design their application, and then when they find a bug, where they need an inverter or an AND gate or a flip-flop or something like that, rather than have to go change all the software and rewrite the code and maybe burn it again, they just add the logic device to the application. And so, uh, I mean, people have been working off the PPA equation for a long time, power performance area, and what, how does this affect uh, one versus the other? Is there any performance benefit out of this, or is it strictly power and area? There's a little bit of performance uh, achieved out of this, is that in this device, you can configure it into non-standard logic functions. For an example, you may need a AND gate with one of the inputs inverted and the other one not. Typically, you have to buy two discrete components, an inverter and an AND gate. Here, you can configure the device to perform that function. So in doing so, you save the space of the two components, you save the power requirement for the two components, and you also save the cost of buying the two components. If you use this for different functions, does the uh, power profile of this and some of the characterization change at all, depending upon what you're using it for, or, or is it consistent from one area to another? It's uh, totally consistent from one uh, function to another. Which helps in terms of mapping out your chip on this is going to be next to this. It really doesn't matter because nothing changes here. Yeah, this is all CMOS logic, so the power consumption is, is minuscule. What does this do in terms of security? So a lot of the logic in the past, particularly the glue logic, has been in, uh, in software, it's been in programmable FPGAs. What happens with this? So the benefit for this from a security point of view is that in the past, if you put a, a typical logic device down there, you can look and see what the part number is, and from the part number, you can determine the function. However, with configurable logic, you don't know what function it's performing. The, the only way you can determine what function this logic device is performing is to deprocess the PCB to determine how the leads are interconnected in the application. Anything you need to know about connecting this kind of logic versus soft software, for example, into the system? Any bus will work or is there something that works better than others? So this is standard CMOS logic. So it's either 3.3 volt logic, 
1.8 volt logic or 0.7 volt logic. So it interfaces directly with the other microprocessors or ASICs that it's uh, working with. Okay, and is there any performance difference in terms of whether it's running at one voltage versus another, or is it pretty consistent? Well, you, for, to run at the 0.7 volts, you use a different process, and that process typically uses a lot less power. As we get into, say, FinFET world versus uh, uh, 28 nanometers versus 40 nanometers, we're starting to deal with much more dynamic power. How does this work in something like that versus, say, an older node? So if you were to compare this device in uh, AXP technology to, say, LVC technology, so you're comparing a 0.7 volt technology versus 3.3 volt technology, dynamic power consumption of the 3.3 volt, 3 .3 volt device is four and a half times as much as it is for the uh, 0.7 volt technology. And from a static power consumption, the 3.3 3 .3 volt technology consumes 33 times more power. So it's a tremendous power savings when you go down to the 0.7 volt node. Are engineers starting to use this for different things, different functions uh, than they, that they would have previously done in software or FPGAs? The main uh, benefit to this device is uh, cost savings cost savings from an actual component savings, but also from a manufacturing savings and from a space savings. So from a manufacturing point of view, they only have to put down one device as opposed to two or three, depending on how it's configured. From a production point of view, if you have a pick and place machine and you have an application that has, let's say, six lo different logic devices on the board, you have to dedicate six different rails in a pick and place machine, one for each of the logic devices. With this component, we only had to have one rail dedicated, and then that pick and place machine would put this, pick this part up and put it on the board in the various locations. And depending on how the PCB is laid out, it'll perform one of, one of the six different functions that's required. Packaging is, is another piece of this whole thing because packaging is becoming a key part of the whole design process. What happens with this kind of logic in, a, in, in package? How do you necessarily look at it? We look at this part going into many different applications. If it's going into industrial, they require a leader package, which is rather large. If it's going into mobility, it's typically going into a leaderless package that uh, is about a quarter the size of a leader package. And if it's going into a wearable device, it's going into a wafer chip scale package, which is again a quarter the size of the uh, leaderless package. From your standpoint, configurable logic is going to be in lots of different places that it has not been in the past. Absolutely. We're seeing it being used in a lot of uh, different applications for a lot of different reasons. Some applications are using it for its power saving benefits, others are using it for its sp space savings benefits, and then th for those customers that are focused on system cost reduction, they, they like the configurable part because they Got, have to dedicate less resources to using it in production. Cliff Lloyd, thanks very much for a great explanation. Thank you.